Our next disease is malaria. It has caused the greatest harm to the greatest number of people on earth. There are an estimated to be about 500 million infections per year and 2 million deaths. 3 billion, that's billion with a B, people live under the threat of infection. Malaria is endemic in Africa, Asia, and Central and South America. Infections may be detected in other places due to travel to endemic areas. <clears throat> Malaria is caused by a set of protozoans from the Plasmodium genus. Only five of 100 species infect humans. They are P. falciparum, which is the biggest problem, P. viva, P. ovale, P. malariae, and P. knolls, which was recently added. Human beings are the only reservoir. The insect vector that transmits malaria from human to human is the female Anopheles mosquito. So, what are the symptoms of malaria? Fever, nausea, vomiting, headache, and diarrhea. The symptoms are cyclical and coincide with emergence of the merozoites from red blood cells, which we'll get into that when we talk about the life cycle. The plasmodia have two life cycles, one in the mosquito and one in humans. The parasite infects a female mosquito when it takes a blood meal of an infected human. The plasmodium gametocytes go to the gut and undergo fertilization. They then swim to the salivary gland and mature there. At this point, they become infective, and when the mosquito bites another human, they are transferred over to the human. The Plasmodium species is absolutely dependent upon this mosquito. And if you eradicate the mosquito in an area, you also eradicate the transmission of this disease to humans. So for more pathogenesis. The life cycle in human actually has two stages. The infecting plasmodia will first head to the liver and infect the cells there. They replicate for a while with few symptoms. So they replicate in this hepatic stage with few symptoms and then they escape and merozoites head to the blood. These merozoites are very sticky and they will stick to red blood cells. They will then be absorbed and they will infect the red blood cell. So over time they grow and you can see characteristic things that you'll see inside the red blood cells, you'll first see this ring, then trophozoites will form, and then they'll form to another form, which is called a schizont, and eventually merozoites. So it goes around and around and around into blood cells. Sometimes it forms a gametocyte, and that gametocyte is the type of cell that actually gets taken up by the mosquito, and that's what gets transmitted to it. These Pathogens are very good at avoiding the immune system because what they will do is that over time uh, they will rearrange their variant surface antigens. So they have a surface antigen on them, on these merozoites, and then they will display a different, completely different surface. The immune system then has to react to that one. It'll start to kill them. When it does, it starts to, the plasmodium parasite then displays a different variant surface antigen and the cycle go continues over and over again. So how is it diagnosed? It, uh, the, basically you take a blood sample and the classic diagnosis and you examine that blood and what you look for is you look for red blood cells that have the malaria parasites in them and you can actually see this in the microscope. There are now rapid diagnostic tests available, but they are of limited use. They're based on PCR or other rapid diagnosis methods, but they're limited use due to cost. Many of the areas where malaria is prevalent, it's too expensive to run these kind of tests. Treatment with a malaria or treatment of malaria is complex. It depends on what parasite you're infected with of the five where in the world you are, and the patient's characteristics and how severe this disease is. 
In most cases, an artemisinin-based drug will be used in combination with chloroquine, lumefantrine, or amadequine. But again, treatment varies on the different areas. Normally, if you're treated with these drugs, you will cure malaria. The good news with malaria is there is now a vaccine. This vaccine, R21, is about 80% effective. It is a component vaccine where it has on it the sporozyte protein plus matrix, the M protein, and it has an adjuvant that helps raise the immune response. So here is data from a recent article that was published and you show that, so the cumulative incidence in percentage of people that were in the test groups, the control group, there is no vaccine. Group two got five micrograms of R21 and 50 micrograms of the matrix protein. Uh, group one got five micrograms of R21 and 25 micrograms of this matrix adjuvant protein. And you see that they've had much lower incidence of malaria in this group compared to the control group. And there are 150 children in each group. This looks like an effective vaccine and hopefully it will roll out soon. Okay, that is it for malaria.